Hi everybody! In this lecture we explore and simulate the performance of the three major types of power line rectifiers. The single diode half wave rectifier, the most common full wave bridge rectifier and voltage doubler. The simulation models are shown below. A single diode half wave rectifier. The simplest rectifier circuit containing only a few components. This type of rectifier is rarely used in real devices because it utilizes only positive or only negative half cycles of the line voltage waveform, which results in relatively poor performance. A full wave bridge rectifier. The most popular type of power line rectifiers. It is widely used in a variety of power adapters, LED light bulbs, smartphone chargers and so on. This type of rectifier utilizes both half cycles of the line voltage waveform. It demonstrates a much better performance than a half wave rectifier. A full wave voltage doubler. This type of rectifier also utilizes both half cycles of the line voltage waveform. The main difference from the bridge rectifier is in its output voltage. It is two times higher than that of the bridge rectifier. This type of rectifier was widely used in the desktop computer power supplies because it is easily switchable between 120 and 230 volts of the main power line voltage. Half wave rectifier in rush current. Let's run and analyze the results of the circuit simulation. A huge current jerk is found on connecting to the power line. This is a huge current jerk. This is the inrush current, the well-known inhering disease of all types of rectifiers. It occurs because the initially discharged filter capacitor C1 charges instantaneously to the line voltage via resistor R1. This resistor limits inrush current values but also inserts power loss at normal operation. The higher the resistance value, the lower the inrush current, but the higher the power loss. Therefore, there is an unresolved conflict between the inrush current value and the harmful power loss. There are several known technical solutions to this conflict. They will be taken into consideration in the next lecture. The high inrush current compromises the lifespan of the filter capacitor. Therefore, the minimum recommended value of R1 is 10 ohms, which restricts the inrush current to an acceptable 16 amps at 120 VAC power line voltage. See, 16 amps in rush current. The filter capacitor value affects only the in rush current pulse duration. The larger the capacitor, the longer the pulse. There is in rush current pulse at 10 microfarad. It is short. And in rush current pulse at 100 microfarad. It is much longer. 
resistor R1 absorbs high energy during the inrush current pulse. This corresponds to the energy stored in the filter capacitor at the peak line voltage, shown in this equation. This is important when selecting the type of resistor. Half-wave rectifier – steady state input current. The results of steady state simulation are depicted in the image here. In the half-wave rectifier the diode conducts current only during short intervals at the top of the positive half-waves of the line voltage, when the instantaneous line voltage exceeds the instantaneous load voltage. Because of that the input current is pulsed. It is pulsed. Only positive half waves create current pulses and deliver energy to the load. Only positive half waves create pulses delivering energy to the load. All the negative half waves are simply ignored. This is a fundamental drawback of this type of rectifier. The positive input current pulses are much shorter than the line voltage half waves. They are short, much shorter than half waves. The height and duration of those pulses depend on the timing constant R load times C1. R load times C1. The larger this value, the higher but shorter the pulses. At 10 microfarad, pulses are longer but lower. At 100 microfarads, pulses are higher but shorter. However, the area of each pulse area of the of each pulse is independent of the filter capacitor value but depends on the load resistor value. Half wave rectifier load ripple voltage. Load ripple voltage is a load voltage value from peak to peak. From peak to peak. Here also from peak to peak. In a half wave rectifier only positive half waves of the line voltage charge the filter capacitor once per period. Only positive half waves charge the capacitor once per period. The charging timing constant is R1 times C1, R1 times C1, which is a small part of the period. The rest of the period the capacitor discharges through the load resistance. This time interval is much longer than charging time. The discharge time and charge time, the discharge time is much longer. These long discharge time intervals cause a significant voltage drop in the load during each period. Yeah, there is significant voltage drop. This voltage drop is strongly dependent on the R load times C1 timing value. R load times C1. The larger this value, the lower the ripple voltage. Due to long discharge time intervals, the half-wave rectifier suffers from high load ripple voltage. Furthermore, as you can see in the circuit, the rectified output current also circulates in the power line. The same current goes to the load and to the power line. 
creating an unpleasant DC offset in the input current. Half wave rectifier summary. Very high output ripple voltage. DC offset in the line current. Average diode forward current is same as load current. Peak diode reverse voltage is twice the line voltage amplitude. This type of rectifier is rarely used in actual devices because it uses only positive or only negative halves of the line voltage waveform. It also suffers from excessive output voltage ripple and unpleasant DC offset in the line current. Full wave bridge rectifier input current Simulation and exploration of the full wave bridge rectifier. The inrush current is similar to that of the half wave rectifier. Same equation for inrush current and same equation for energy absorbed by current limiting resistor. However, the steady state current is completely different. Similarly to the half-wave rectifier, the input current is also pulsed. But these pulses occur in both positive and negative half-waves of the line voltage period, as shown in the lower picture. Now current pulses associated with both negative and positive half waves of the line voltage. As seen in the image, the current pulses are always located on the top and bottom of the line voltage curve. The height and duration of the pulses are also dependent on the R load times C1 timing value R load times C1. The larger the value, the higher but shorter the pulses. At 10 microfarads, pulses are lower but wider. At 100 microfarad, pulses are higher but shorter. However, the area of each current pulse, area of each current pulse is independent of the filter capacitor value, but depends on the load resistance value. Full wave bridge rectifier power factor. Let's determine the power factor of this bridge rectifier. First, run the simulation model over the steady state interval, for example, from a second to two seconds. View the line voltage, line current and product of them. There is line voltage, there is line current and there is product of them. The product of instant voltage and instant current is an instant power. There is instant power. The mean value of such instant power is active power. Using a measurement tool, determine the RMS value of the line voltage. RMS value is 120.2 volts RMS. The RMS value of the line current, it is 206.29 milliamps RMS. And the mean value of the instant power or same as active power it is 13.55 watts now we can get a power factor apparent power is RMS voltage times RMS current it is 24.8 VA active power is 13 0.55 watts. So, power factor 
is the ratio of them 0 0.546 it is not a very good value full wave bridge rectifier load ripple voltage unlike a half wave rectifier the diodes in the bridge rectifier conduct the current on both positive and negative half waves creating current pulses both in the power line and in the load the two half waves are now in operation negative half wave in operation and positive half wave in operation those pulses are also short similar to those of the half wave rectifier however the current pulse frequency is now twice the line frequency for this reason the load ripple voltage frequency is also twice the line frequency so the discharge intervals are twice as short as those of a half wave rectifier the discharge intervals are twice shorter similarly to the half wave rectifier the load ripple voltage is also strongly dependent on the R load times C1 timing constant R load times C1 the larger this value the lower the ripple voltage at 10 microfarad ripple voltage is large at 100 microfarad ripple voltage are much lower however due to shorter discharge intervals the output ripple voltage of the bridge rectifier is twice lower than that of the half wave rectifier at the same R load times C1 timing constant so the ripple filter works more efficiently with the same filter capacitor with the same load resistance ripple voltage are twice lower in addition there is no longer any direct current in the power line full wave bridge rectifier simulation results the results of the bridge rectifier simulation without filter capacitor and with three different values of the filter capacitor 10 microfarad 33 microfarad and 100 microfarad are summarized in the following table the rectifier without a filter capacitor demonstrates the perfect unity power factor but its huge load ripple voltage is not acceptable for almost any application power factor is unity but output voltage ripple is huge any filter capacitor reduces power factor however the difference in the power factor between 10 microfarad and 100 microfarad is not so substantial but the difference in voltage ripple is really huge the power factor 10 microfarad 0.606 100 microfarad 0.546 not a significant difference but difference in output voltage ripple is significant at 10 microfarad 44 volts and at 100 microfarad only 5.5 volts
For most applications, the lower the ripple, the better. So, the reasonable designer's choice is to use a larger filter capacitor, slightly sacrificing the power factor, but greatly winning in the ripple voltage. However, do not forget about pulsed energy dissipation in the inrush current limiting resistor. It is proportional to the value of the filter capacitor, so that the resistor has to be able to absorb this energy. Full wave bridge rectifier summary. Lower output ripple voltage. No DC offset in the line current. Average diode forward current is one half of load current. Peak diode reverse voltage is same as line voltage amplitude. The full wave bridge rectifier is the most popular type of rectifier. It contains four diodes, filter capacitor and inrush current limiter. This rectifier uses both halves of the line voltage curve, which reduces the output ripple voltage and eliminates the unpleasant DC offset in the input current. Full wave voltage doubler, input current and load ripple voltage. This rectifier consists of two half-wave rectifiers, a positive rectifier and a negative rectifier. Similar to a bridge, it utilizes both half-cycles of the line voltage waveform. For this reason, the input current waveform, output ripple voltage and power factor are similar to those of the bridge. However, the rectified output voltage is equal to the peak-to-peak -peak line voltage. Peak-to-peak -peak line voltage. That is twice as high as that of the bridge. The output voltage is twice higher than that of the bridge. This may be very important if we need an output voltage higher than peak line voltage. The simulated performance waveforms of the voltage doubler are shown in the picture. The input current and ripple voltage waveforms are similar to those of the bridge rectifier. Same ripple voltage and same input current waveform. Full wave universal input rectifier. It is interesting and important that a bridge rectifier can be easily converted to the voltage doubler by adding an additional filter capacitor and a mechanical switch. Additional filter capacitor and mechanical switch. This solution is normally used in 115 to 30 volt universal input voltage devices such as old style computer power supplies. This is the back panel of the computer power supply and this is the switch 115 to 30. If the switch is open, the rectifier configuration corresponds to a bridge rectifier as shown in the picture. Switch is open, we get bridge rectifier. In this case, the line voltage must be 230 VAC or 240 VAC, while the rectified output voltage is around 330 VDC. However, 
if the switch is closed, the rectifier turns into a voltage doubler. Switch closed, now we have voltage doubler. Now it accepts only 115 VAC or 120 VAC line voltage, producing the same 330 VDC output voltage. In this case, the diodes D2 and D4, D2 and D4 are permanently reversed biased. Therefore, they do not conduct any current as if they were simply not present on the circuit. Watch for the switch positions. If the switch is closed and the device is erroneously connected to a 230 volt power line, a big explosion may happen. Power line rectifier circuit comparison. We compare three rectifier circuits, half wave, full wave bridge and voltage doubler. Output rectified voltage, peak line voltage at half wave, peak line voltage at bridge, twice peak line voltage at voltage doubler. Diode forward current, half wave, same as load current, bridge, only half load current, voltage doubler, same as load current. Diode reverse voltage, half wave, twice peak line voltage. Bridge, peak line voltage, voltage doubler, twice peak line voltage. Output voltage, ripple, half wave, high. Full wave, bridge, moderate, voltage doubler, moderate. Pros, half wave rectifier, simplicity. Bridge rectifier, lower diode stress, lower ripple voltage, voltage doubler, good for universal 120 to 30 input power supplies. Cons, half wave, high diode stress, high ripple voltage, DC offset in the input current. Bridge, requires four diodes. Voltage doubler, high diode stress, requires two filter capacitors. Comments, half wave, rarely used in very low power devices only. Bridge, the most common type of power line rectifier. Voltage doubler, used when high output voltage is required. Thank you for your attention. The next lecture is devoted to inrush current limiters. This is email for questions. Goodbye.